Welcome to the 54th edition of Podcasters, today with Anthony Alcaraz. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, my pleasure. Uh, please introduce yourself a little bit more. I just mentioned your name. Yes, I am Anthony Alcaraz. I am a, 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 a chief AI officer at Aldesis. Uh, we are a small company, but we are building um, BI tools, so business intelligence uh, tool that we augment with artificial intelligence. And we work for a large corporation. Uh, so I, 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 before that, I, I was a four, four year uh, a CFO, a chief financial officer. And I joined the uh, data community uh, two years ago. I, I started publishing on LinkedIn uh, about data science and stuff. I, and I got a real passion for data science related uh, techniques and ch change management uh, challenge, etc. So how did you go from CFO to uh, chief AI <laughs> officer? And I, okay. and I know before and before that you worked for uh, the social security uh, yes. uh, office. I, I, wa I was CFO for the social security ah. office. Why why did I join the data community? Because uh, why now I work for the social security? Uh, you imagine that it is a there there are lots of uh, data challenges there. And I had uh, many ideas about uh, machine learning, machine learning MLOps, uh, machine learning operation uh, project. Uh, I developed uh, yeah. some projects there. And from there, uh, my passion about data uh, increased. <laughs> so I, I, I told myself, uh, uh, those projects, uh, you like it and maybe uh, you should find an opportunity on a job uh, full time on the, the subject. <laughs> and, uh, that's it. <laughs> How did you teach yourself? Because uh, I think a lot of people are interested uh, uh, to move in this direction. How did I, that work? Uh, I had uh, I started by uh, by a, sc a school, a French pr private school uh, in Paris. Uh, it's called Data Scientist. They did a, a good course for introductory course, but uh, since since I started uh, there. I mostly uh, uh, learn by myself uh, by following um, um, influencer, uh, influencer on LinkedIn and by reading papers. Uh, I try to, to be up to date with uh, uh, papers on data science uh, online. I try to, uh, to talk to as many people as I can. Uh, I try to uh, answer, I see a notebook to reproduce what I, what I see. And uh, over time, by creating content, by reading more and more paper, etc., I start by uh, creating, by having ideas, and uh, I, I think I, it has been two years that not even a single day I didn't practice uh, data science. So every day I try to code something, to write something, to read something, uh, and I think over time it, it's, it, there is compounding effects, and you, you you get better. Yes. And that's interesting. That 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 matches with the current uh, state of affairs in education and hiring, because it's it's going from uh, diplomas to skill based. Yes, I, I would like uh, because I think diplomas are important for a start. Um, but uh, data science is is such an evolving field. There is so much. Uh, uh, there is uh, natural language processing, computer vision. Uh, prediction based uh, system. There is so much things to learn. You need to start small, I think, and to build real projects and to get a sense of what it, what it is, uh, to really uh, grasp it and understand it and, and see the stacks behind uh, some uh, papers, etc. Yes. So. And how do you keep up with everything that's coming out? Because uh, <laughs> uh, uh, ah. I, I, I'm, uh, uh, I think we almost need AI to keep up with everything exactly. new that comes out. <laughs> exactly. I, 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 I use extensively artificial intelligence. Uh, I have my own uh, Are you racks. still there? I, I, I don't I hear you. My Ah, okay. now I hear, now okay. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I use my own uh, rack system, so retrieval augmented generation, to read paper, to dissect them. Uh, to focus on some part, etc. So I use artificial intelligence to keep up because uh, there, there is so many papers. Uh, I see artificial intelligence like uh, um, a, a net, a net for fish. You know, uh, you got a lot of fish and you 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 throw your net 
and artificial intelligence for me is just like that. Uh, and maybe there is some fish that are better than others, but you need that net to get those fish, you know. So I, I will, uh, it's, it's like a, a prioritization tool for me uh, in terms of learning and, uh, yes, uh, information. So you create AI to use AI to create Booyah Best for you. Yes, exactly. I, I'm not from Marseille, but yes, I like Booyah Best. Uh, yeah. so. I, I think it's an inside joke for the French. But, uh, <laughs> yes. but um, um, if, if you, because you put a lot of posts out there that look ahead. If I yes. may, may say so. And if you, you look ahead, um, we see things happening and, and, and we just talked before we started recording. Um, one of the things we see in the market, we both see in the market is that, uh, on the one hand, people underestimate, uh, underestimate what's happening. They, they, yes. they have no idea. Um, everything is changing and rapidly. And at the same time, big corporations are, are investing in big amounts of money. And making big mistakes. And um, how do you? Could you elaborate on that? On your vision on that? Because yes. uh, otherwise, I'd be saying my vision. But okay, I think you need to understand artificial intelligence as a long trend. Uh, so I, I, I think it starts uh, pushing really hard since uh, twenty. Uh, 2010. Uh, 2010, you got some papers about deep learning models. Some uh, there, there is a, 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 a creation of model that can uh, predict uh, uh, numbers, uh, that can uh, predict uh, images, uh, discern uh, a cat from a dog, etc., etc. Now, what what we got with generative AI uh, are models that can uh, reproduce, but uh, not perfectly, huh? with, with many flaws, uh, writing uh, that can create uh, new images, uh, even now songs, audio, etc. Et so there, there, these are new capabilities and, and it will, I think, impact uh, more uh, domains and more jobs than previously because previously you got an uh, extremely performant model that are no... Uh, they are, they are now working within our apps. A recommendation system, for example, are the RF of uh, uh, social media. You know, in every social media site, you got artificial intelligence already, uh, recommendation system. Uh, and if, if you look, for example, for recommendation system, every week, every week, you got uh, a three or four papers that are uh, improving those recommendation systems. So I think artificial intelligence is a long trend. It starts... Uh, there, there are long winters. Now we are in some sort of, I think, uh, not a golden age, but uh, uh, the, the technology is maturing. Okay, uh, but if we take uh, generative AI, my my view currently, uh, yes, it is powerful. We are not yet at uh, an intelligent system because it is a, a next token prediction system for writing. It cannot reason by by itself. Uh, uh, it's not that creative, but it helps user be creative. It's uh, it 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 create it uh, it improves productivity of uh, workforce. And, and to, to, to correctly le leverage it uh, within a private company, it's missing one component, I think. I think that the good move for companies would be to invest in some sort of uh, knowledge store. Uh, 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 I talked with a friend of mine, Tony Seal, yesterday. Uh, it, 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 himself, he talked about... Uh, uh, a work memory graph um, uh, because those models are better if you give them the right data, the good data. So what company, I think many companies have lost the uh, the engine and the uh, uh, IE system uh, war. I think big tech will continue to improve their model. Uh, they have a, a lead on that because they have the talent, they have data uh, IE engineers, etc. For leverage those models or build uh, open source, because there is an open source trend as well to leverage open source or private models, you need to build some sort of uh, data infrastructures. And right now, for example, to do RAG, retrieval augmentation generation, 
uh, there is a vectorization, so vector database, okay? But what I am promoting, I think it's, it is a smarter move to invest in knowledge graph uh, database. Why? Because you can do much more in terms of reasoning with graph algorithm, uh, in terms of uh, metadata within your graph, uh, with a knowledge graph. So I think right now the, the best approach for company uh, is at, at the same time to start small on small project uh, to educate their uh, workforce, etc. But also to think long term. In long term, you will have more powerful model that will be popping up, coming. But those powerful model won't have access to private data. And the, the, the true value, the true value of uh, artificial intelligence is the data. Uh, and their data will become some sort of value. But to leverage their value, they will need to invest heavily in, in database system that are uh, adequate to those models. This is my, my view, I think. Uh, and I think it is a, a huge market because right now uh, there is a, a, in, a, the most demanding job right now are data engineering, uh, data engineering jobs. Uh, there, I think there is a, a global lack of uh, skills in, in that domain. Uh, there are some excellent data engineers that right there in the world, but, but there are too few, I think. I think data strategy in companies are lacking. Uh, this is my, um, my current stance. <laughs> yes. um, I, I, I share your vision. Um, but if you then look at what companies are doing, the big companies, the, the, the big corporations, um, I see not small projects. I see big projects. Yes. Um, I see them investing in training models, uh, pouring large amounts of money in there, working together with, uh, uh, open AI or Microsoft or, or, uh, Amazon bedrock or what have you. Um, and, and not understanding that once they have, uh, these AI tools in every corner of their company, they start, well, they start laying off people because they're more efficient. And then the shit is going to hit the fan because all these companies are in there. Uh, like you said, before we started recording, they are in, they're in there for the money, not to please the company. So if they're yes. in there for the money, well, and that's not a bad thing, by the way, but if they're in there for the money, they go in low, they end up high. So what they do, they hook them, they get them hooked on, 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 um, the LLMs or the models that they're using, uh, keep the token cost relatively low. And then once it's everywhere, they start turning this little notch called the price of a token. And then it goes up, 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 up. And then all the savings you have by laying off people, which I'm not, I'm not pro because, uh, I'd rather have them do more with the same amount of people and make uh, jobs more interesting for the people. But that's my opinion. Um, because these are the people that are highly trained. Because what if the system doesn't work? Who is going to talk to the customer? Um, yes, I, I think there is two, two, two things what you are saying. First, I think it is a, a global strategy of big tech to build infrastructure to lock to lock their client in. Uh, most of revenue for uh, for Microsoft, for example, comes from Microsoft Azure. So what what we I think I think it is logical. They want to improve the value of their uh, cloud infrastructure, and, and to improve the value of their cloud infrastructure uh, is to develop uh, some uh, artificial intelligence model that can be used by a company. So it will increase the demand for uh, cloud resources, and they will uh, it will increase their revenue. I think it is that simple. Their strategy is, is that. And, and you talk about company that will uh, cost cost reduce cost reduce their, uh, that, that will uh, uh, separate from people that will uh, um, uh, do a, a more uh, cost efficient. Uh, I think it is a mistake because you need to think artificial intelligence long term. I think artificial intelligence allow your workforce to 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 be more productive, to do more with less. So what? There, there was a study uh, I read it uh, this week. It show it it studied company from uh, 2010 to 2018, so before generative AI. And what it shows is that more, the more the company invests in AI tools, the more it innovates. Okay, because I think that artificial intelligence allow you to to reduce uh, time spent on uh, useless tasks 
on uh, manual tasks, on administrative tasks, and, and concentrate the task on more client satisfaction actions, more on uh, uh, improvement of your product. Uh, I think the, the good strategy is there, is to educate your workforce on using IE tools, and there is value in using IE tools. I think so, Big Tech got it right, because right now, myself, I use IE tools, and it improves greatly my productivity. Uh, and you need to think about, oh, I can improve my services with uh, this workforce imp uh, augmented by artificial intelligence. Uh, obviously, there are exceptions. Maybe, maybe there are tasks that are, can be totally, uh, 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 to to totally uh, uh, automatized and uh, uh, this workforce will be uh, hardly uh, 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 put in other uh, activities. I think this will, will happen also. But... Yes, and 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 also large language model right now have have used li limitation. Uh, uh, like I said, you you need the proper data infrastructure, and it is very hard to get it right to to make them uh, reason on your data on your business. Uh, uh, yes, please. Um, it, you you say that. Um, um... Um, companies need to make a long-term strategy, but what we see is they make short-term investments. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, somehow that, that doesn't, in well, my head, that doesn't match. I see them take short-term decisions and short-term investments. Uh, if you, you talk long-term strategy, they need to have a plan for, I don't know, and, and money available for the coming five years at least. Um, and then re and, and every, every year you need to rethink your strategy and make sure that you have enough resources, et cetera. That's one thing. The second thing you need to budget in, uh, to retrain the people that, uh, are not, that, that their work, uh, has been automated away. And the other thing I don't understand that not, not because of what you said, but in general, how come all of a sudden when now that AI is a big thing, I mean, it's been around for a while, but now that, that, that it, all of a sudden it's hyped, since a year, um, a lot of the tasks that could have been automated before with all the technology that was already available, like RPA or, or other tech, and there's enough available, um, wasn't automated. And now all of a sudden, because, you know, AI, we, uh, we feel we should automate it. Um, that, that sort of doesn't make sense. If, if, <laughs> why didn't you do it before? Right? Yes. And, I, and you, I, understand, you, understand, it, you understand what I, I mean? I, I'll take an example. Um, I know many companies in, in France, for example, and I think in, in Europe, in Europe, we, we are pretty late uh, in terms of uh, using uh, deep learning and machine learning models, etc., to productionize model in, in our companies. Uh, and I think that the access to artificial intelligence by every cost customers on the planet. But that's what opened uh, OpenAI. You know, OpenAI, you, you just need a, a free account. Uh, in two clicks, you got uh, access directly to our artificial intelligence. And it was massively used. I, I think OpenAI was a moment to uh, op access, to, uh, to global access to this kind of technology. And I think that this created the, some sort of wake-up call. But right now, see, we see that... It has been 10 years that we got technology that can predict numbers, that can optimize, that can recommend, et cetera, et cetera. And, and I, I think it is some sort of a, a, a fear, a fear from a, a corporation that didn't have artificial intelligence or uh, they, they, they do it by fear because they fear that their uh, competitors will get it right and they'll destroy them. Uh, and in history, every company that use uh, artificial intelligence uh, in large scale uh, tends to destroy competition. Uh, uh, just the example of Amazon. Amazon is full of artificial intelligence. Okay, it is not only recommendation. Right now, they are connecting uh, uh, their recommendation system to the warehouse, to robotics, to and they completely destroy their competition. So. so uh, when you get it right, 
you, you are unstoppable. You, you increase your value share because the experience for the user is more smooth. You got, you got personalization. You got uh, everything that you need. Uh, and with automation. So, so uh, I think it, uh, yes. So I have a question about that. I, uh, I don't know if you remember, I had Nir Eyal in my podcast a while ago. And he wrote the book about the model uh, Hooked, you know? Yes. And, um, 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 and I know it's a bit suggestive. The, the, the way Amazon does it, 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 it gets things right. So it's a great customer experience. But don't customers or aren't customers... Uh, ordering stuff they actually don't need, but just because it's such an amazing experience and then they get sort of psychologically this dopamine kick and they say, Oh, yes, I want it. Yes. Um, and, and, and I'm, I'm a bit worried if that's a healthy, uh, development because people are buying stuff they don't need. Um, yes. and, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the, let's say the, if you go to Paris or, or in Amsterdam, there's some lovely bookstores. You know, actual yes. bookstores, you walk in, you get the book and, exactly. uh, and, um, um, and I understand everything digital is great, but th there is also like the, uh, we, we don't live in a, in a virtual reality world. We live in an actual world with actual yes. people and actual products. And, um, um, if we go too far in this, and I'm not saying we shouldn't develop it, but think about it. Um, it has huge social consequences. A bookstore is a place where you, meet people where you talk about books and I'm, and I'm, yes. and I have to be honest, I haven't been in a bookstore in a while. Um, because it just, I know I don't have time to read books. I read articles and I, I use AI to, to do it efficiently. <laughs> and when I read a book, uh, it's on vacation Then I actually have the time to put, put everything aside. Do you recognize this, right? I have the same species. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but, but, and I love walking through a bookstore and looking and, 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 so the actual experience is same with why do newspapers still sell newspapers? Even though it ha has gone down, they still sell newspapers. Why? People read it at the toilet. It's, it's, uh, it's horrible. They say, you know, they have this newspaper or book at the toilet and then you don't, they don't want to take their iPad there or their, their Kobo reader or whatever. I think that what you touch, I think the reading experience, if you take the reading experience, will stay because I think uh, 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 our children, we, we want our children to read uh, actual books. Uh, uh, it will modify it. I think that the needs for actual books will be reduced. But what you, what you said, it's much more profound than that. Uh, you, 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 you spoke about the book, our, our book. Yes, I think artificial intelligence is so powerful as a technology that it can modify the functioning of a society. Uh, oh, 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 technology can modify how we live our day, our day to day. Uh, mobile phone did that. Uh, and with mobile phone, you, we got a, a recommendation permanently uh, uh, by having small. Uh, I saw uh, someone from uh, Meta that say they got inspired by casino, by casino practice. To uh, all they do is to uh, induce you to uh, use your phone with uh, a notification, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And behind there are artificial intelligence. And there are artificial intelligence in every med social media that you see. Uh, we are creating bubbles, bubbles for people, because what you like, what you comment, uh, will inc imp increase uh, the content uh, related to of what you like and what you comment uh, in the coming weeks or days. So what you will see uh, long term, it's only what you have liked or what, what you have comment. So I think that behind artificial intelligence, what we need to think about, and I think it is not only a, a debate for technical people, are some norms. For example, I am a great uh, promoter of... Uh, uh, for example, for our recommendation algorithm in the social media, we, we need to to make sure that people see subjects that they, they disagree with. Uh, uh, we need to be confronted with people that we we don't talk to. Uh, with it is very important for democracy, for a, a healthy society. And behind this, you need a regulation. Uh, uh, so I think that right now we are trying to regulate artificial intelligence. It is a good thing, but you need to do it. You need to to to, to have uh, in in Europe. We need to to see what is happening. Uh, China and artificial and, and uh, the United States are. Uh, 
are releasing, they are the brains, okay? They are the big tech. They are the company that are making money. They are the brains or every uh, tech people want to work for Meta, Google, etc. So we are late. Uh, we don't have big player. And I think that this industry will, will totally revolutionize uh, many sectors. So it will be very important. So we need to have regulation that don't impend, don't penalize uh, a new player in the field. Uh, we need to, to foster innovation while limiting uh, its uh, dark side, uh, the, the dark moon of the artificial intelligence. So I think we need to, to have a, a, a good regulate, uh, some sort of equilibrium in the regulation for the years. But I perfectly agree with you. Uh, but what I want to say with artificial intelligence, it's, it does what you, you choose uh, because uh, the way you program algorithm are the choice of the programmer. The way uh, uh, things are recommended to you are the, the thing that you liked or the thing that you follow. Uh, you can buy your, your, your own LinkedIn, uh, for example, uh, f- feed algorithm. Myself, I, bi- I buy my mind. Uh, I love artificial intelligence and data science. All that I see, all uh, the only thing that I see in my LinkedIn are data science and artificial intelligence content. So I, I enslave my own uh, recommendation engines to to give me what I want. You know, uh, we need to educate people to use smartly those uh, those powerful tools. Yes, I, I think. But um, having said that, um, you just said you created uh, your own bias in uh, in LinkedIn. Um, doesn't that, that eventually lead to a sort of a tunnel vision that, that uh, uh, you don't see the stuff that happens outside your tunnel, your AI <laughs> machine learning tunnel, and, yes. and um, um, that actually, in the beginning, you said something about creativity. And um, uh, the, the way I see it, a lot of people are being helped. They have no or very little creativity. So if the paper is not empty to start with, then they can actually start reasoning and thinking. If the paper is empty, it's very hard for them to come up with something to fill yes. the paper with. Yes. So it's it's a good starter. Yes. Um, and I and I agree that and I see I agree to that and I see that. However, um, um, if you bias everything you do, and that's what the yes algorithms do, and that's and I fully agree. Also in democracy, it's it's important. Um, Aren't we limiting our, our own creativity by not feeding ourselves with the stuff outside of our tunnel sort of vision? It is true. This is why I think that uh, we need to have some rules within those algorithms to uh, diversify what we see. Even if we, uh, even if uh, me, Anthony, I like uh, only data science, artificial and content, I need to be to to be able to see. Uh, content that are not are, are exterior to my uh, to, to my social media uh, liking etc etc. So uh, I think it is a design choice. It's an, an arch- architectural choice. Yes, but uh, I I I did it conscientiously. Uh, I can choose to to see uh, otherwise. To to uh, uh, the problem is those systems are doing this on many people and people. Don't, are not conscious of what they are seeing or what they are doing. Uh, I think this is a risk. Uh, and I think it will come from education. Uh, from uh, for the, Everyone needs to understand what is behind those tools. Uh, uh, everyone needs to understand how we train a machine learning model. Uh, not, not, not specifically technical, but to understand the, the get-go of this. Uh, it is very, very essential, I think, to educate people. Uh, it will free, free them. Uh, b- because right now, um, we talk about artificial intelligence, but uh, most models, many models are open source. I, I am a huge believer in open source models. I think I, artificial I, intelligence I, needs to be open source. Uh, yeah, yes. I, I, I fully agree. It is a powerful tool to free people, I think, to 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 uh, develop their creativity, to uh, to empower freelance work. Um, I, I am uh, optimistic on this. Uh, there are many risks. Okay, there are risk of uh, uh, regulation capture by big tech. 
uh, their risk of uh, huge monopolies from few people that will be controlling uh, a larger part of our society because uh, with money, with those tools will come powers, okay, uh, to influence. Uh, we see, see it avec, with Meta, uh, um, uh, there was a scandal of uh, uh, influence on the election at the United States. Yeah, yeah. They, they are powerful tools. Uh, and with those powerful tools will come powers. And with power, normally will come responsibilities. Uh, and I think we, we need to, to f f favor competition in this field to uh, prevent a large monopoly from emerging. Uh, I think it would be a catastrophe if only a few people will uh, control this market. Uh, we need to make sure that it is an open market, that a startup that has a good idea and fundings can uh, uh, enter in competition with a large corporation, etc. Right now, it's not the case. Uh, I think there is a huge concentration in few uh, companies and those companies have a huge power on what is happening. Uh, and I, 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 I myself, uh, uh, if I have an opportunity to, to work for the OpenAI, etc., uh, I will think uh, twice and uh, maybe uh, I will go there, you know. Um, uh, yeah, but the salaries they're paying are crazy. They attract, yes, they attract talents. They attract uh, the best uh, uh, people. Uh, uh, right. So, uh, there is, there is a, some superstar effect, you know. Uh, a few people reap all the reward. Uh, I think it is a huge, the biggest risk right now uh, because this will create... Uh, I am a huge believer in um, uh, in France. We got a, a thinker. It called uh, Montesquieu. Uh, ah. It said it said that uh, 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 when you got uh, uh, that power corrupt, okay, and absolute power corrupt absolutely. <laughs> okay, that's a, <laughs> Montesquieu. That's a, that's an old one, but it's still tr <laughs> unfortunately it's still true. I, I, I have, because of what you just said, I have two questions. Um, the first one is this morning I heard on the radio, uh, a news about, uh, AI investment in Europe, uh, um, staying behind, um, big, big time. And, uh, and in Holland, uh, of course, also that's one thing. And that's, that coincides with what you just said. And the other thing is, if you look at the European AI Act, which sets to re regulate AI, yeah. I don't know if you looked at that. Yeah, yes, um, yes, uh, obviously, yes. <laughs> and how, how do you view that? So how do you view, on one hand, we see the investments in AI uh, uh, go down, and that's worldwide, but in Europe even more. And uh, and at the same time, we have this European AI Act. Could, could they be correlated? Or um, I don't know. It's, what do you think? Uh, my, my view is pretty bleak because... Um, I think that we, 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 we got it too far with the uh, AI Act. I, I see, I see it as uh, preventing, uh, I, 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 as augmenting the cost of innovation in the field. Uh, and right now I saw, I saw that France, uh, Italy and some other pay, uh, countries are promoting soft laws. So soft regulation. Uh, Spain, so, England. Yes, Spain. Yes, they saw it. They, they saw they, that the European, European Union got it too far. I am agreeing with it. I, I can't tell the detail why. There are many, many, many uh, obligations. They will, they will increase the cost of uh, AI project. Uh, and I, I don't. It's absurd because all the the big AI thing is not in Europe. Okay, uh, what we become uh, over time, uh, and it will shock people. What I, I am, I will say, but but we are becoming as European sellers of product, not builders, <laughs> and this is a huge problem. Uh, okay, because uh, when you only sell something, you are not proprietary of what you are selling. Uh, you are selling something that is not culturally forcibly fit with what you are selling, etc. Et so what we we need to do in Europe, and I, I don't want a, a political role, etc. I am not just giving an advice, okay? I, 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 am, I am too passionate by data science. Uh, 
uh, is to to foster innovation in this field. So is to help uh, small companies, startup in Euro in Europe to to become big player. Uh, this this is a priority of uh, this continent. I, I think uh, if we don't do that, I am afraid that we will be totally in the sphere of the uh, United States. Um, uh, that, okay. But we've been... It, that, that, it's been like that for a while already. <laughs> yes, but it will increase, I think. <laughs> yeah, but if you, uh, if you look at France, for instance, and not so long ago, uh, uh, a new LLM uh, uh, started in France, uh, well-funded, yes. Mistral. Mist Mistral, yes, yes. yes. I think but, 100, 150 million euros, which is... Uh, not bad it is, for a startup. It is pretty interesting, Mistral, because I think they, 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 they got a, a really good job. Uh, for example, Mistral is the base of the, uh, the best open source model right now. That is Zephyr. Okay. Zephyr was trained on Mistral. So they got it. Uh, it's perfect. Okay. But okay. Who, who are we? We create an open source model that is used. It's best as the other open source model, but. But it's not GPT-4, okay? Um, uh, it's it step behind uh, the innovation uh, in, in terms of uh, large language model. It is an inno innovation per se. The, the, the way that they trend it is in an innovation, etc. But uh, we, we need more of uh, mis we need more of this type of company. We, we can't we, we can't be content of uh, just that, you know. That is why in France, for example, you, you got uh, Xavier Niel. Uh, okay, the CEO of Free that is promoting for the creation of a large uh, lab uh, in uh, Paris, uh, a French lab. Uh, it extends this uh, even for in Europe uh, to, 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 to do uh, artificial intelligence research, etc. Et uh, okay, I think we need more of that. Uh, yes. But I also heard that the uh, EU is uh, in terms of also promoting this and wanting to be a uh, uh, international hub for AI development, um, a bit late, but okay. Um, they, they intend to put a supercomputer there to have the, um, um, the, the, you need a lot of uh, calculation capacity, right? Yes. So they, they intend to put in a supercomputer where all the AI startups could use it to advance their developments and go faster and cheaper and, and maybe fund that even from the EU. Uh, yes. I think that, that will be a problem too, because that's government subsidy. Um, and that's false competition even. So th th we run into our own rules and regulations, whatever we do. Uh, there, right? is a, uh, there is a small detail uh, for Mistral, for example. If you look at the uh, composition of the creator of Mistral, uh, of, uh, yes, Mistral, uh, there, there, there is a, a former uh, Secretary of State <laughs> yes, within the company. So ah. uh, I think... Uh, Yes, there is a risk of uh, doing too much uh, with uh, um, many uh, public money and uh, to create a false sense of uh, innovation of uh, Silicon Valley uh, is a culture. Um, uh, is a culture of uh, innovation. Uh, there, there are community communities, etc., etc. Uh, they are not a uh, finance. There is no public funds uh, to uh, at the uh, at the start. Uh, I think that the, 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 the biggest challenge is to create a culture of innovation, uh, a culture uh, a culture of AI communities within Europe uh, to foster innovation, to have uh, our own model, etc. In partnership with the United States, and the, this is what it is happening. But I think that we need more. Uh, infrastructure for this in Europe, uh, uh, more people that are wanting to, 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 to study artificial intelligence. Uh, yes, we need much more research, much more funds uh, in terms of uh, schools, etc. And to, to let the market uh, create such initiative uh, afterwards. Uh, yes. uh, it's very, very complicated, I think, in terms of... Uh, it is policy making. It is. It is, and it becomes more more complicated because um, you just said something about schools, and that brings me to education. Um, yes. Uh, so the, 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 there's two ways to look at that um, because the way the schooling system, at least in in Holland, but I think also in other countries in Europe, works 
it's very old fashioned and uh, the kids that come out of school are not very well educated generally. Um, yes. They don't read books anymore. They, uh, so they have a hard time reading. They have a hard time writing. Uh, and of course, AI can do a lot of that, but that become that, that what's going to happen that the capabilities and the talents of people are going to be less uh, exploited or used in a, in a positive sense. Um, because the, the schooling is not, uh, I would say up to date. And that's one thing. And the other thing is we don't teach our kids how to use social media. And actually they should learn how to build an algorithm themselves. So they understand what's happening inside yes. the algorithms. Um, and, um, I think the teachers, but well, uh, this is my opinion, right? You can yes, yes, judge uh, if I'm right. Teachers should be more of a guide through all the knowledge because the knowledge is readily available. Why teach someone uh, a lot of the stuff they can ask any chatbot we create? You know, we can create a chatbot easily, not a problem. Um, and they can ask any question, get any correct answer. We can even do that. Um, and uh, um, so uh, learning it by heart, uh, it serves a function, but it serves the function of learning, not so much the knowledge itself. Um, so the, the question is, if we move to skill-based uh, uh, workers, and actually what you're saying is, um, if you talk about AI and programming and building algorithms, et cetera, et cetera, those are skills, just yes. plain skills. And, uh, and um, the point is, if you go to school and learn that, by the time you get out of school, anything you have learned is outdated. That's the point. Yes. We, we have a hard time keeping up with everything that comes out. Imagine if you're in school and you're using book, <laughs> books that are four years old. It's <laughs> useless. It's, uh, in, uh, in my field, data science, uh, it's evolving to... Uh, there are some basics, okay? Once you get the basics, the algorithm in themselves uh, are evolving really fast. But there are basics. You, you know, for example, uh, in machine learning, uh, XGBoost is an excellent model for all its uh, relevance to the tabular data sets. And, and if you take data science, it's not the knowledge of algorithm that is more important. Is the ability to solve a business problem with a technique. So it is a, a skill to connect uh, the reality of a business with the techniques. That, so I think it inspired me to think education with large language model, for example, or artificial intelligence. I, I think we, we need to get the exams and, uh, in a different uh, way. We need to get them more project oriented. Uh, kids need to access those tools to solve their exams. You know, we need to uh, to educate them to use them to get a result. So, I, I, and it is a, a complete shift in education because right now most of education in France it is the case. It is you you learn your lesson and you get exams that are uh, basics or relevance to your lesson. I think it needs to change. Uh, so the lessons are, are just a step to resolve a project, uh, a, a problematic, uh, and, to, and maybe to work on this problematic with other people. So I think that so the education system needs to, to work that way, to, to incorporate those tools in their curriculum, to teach people or to build or use them, etc., and to build their exam, their evaluation on some solving real problems. Uh, and maybe to, to have partnership with actual companies, uh, uh, to have some sort of private, uh, pr private public partnership where project, projects are actual problems from companies. And, and, and it, it will increase also the employability and the, uh, I think, I think university needs to, to do that. Some universities are doing that. Uh, there are uh, more and more, um, I know, um, uh, uh, people that are also working in a company uh, at the same time that they're studying. Uh, I think we, we need to, 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 do, to, to, to foster this type of uh, dynamic because I think that large language model modify completely the way that we are learning. Uh, I use it to learn and it is pretty powerful. I will give an example. You can take a paper, okay, a paper about uh, complicated stuff. You can uh, uh, upload this paper in a large language model like uh, Claude 2, okay, and transform your uh, paper uh, in a chatbot 
that will ask answer about this paper, that will uh, create games about this paper, etc. It, it changes the way that you learn. Okay, it's more interactive. Uh, it's more easy to uh, get abstracts of the paper, etc., etc. So uh, it increases the the speed uh, with uh, with which you get information and knowledge. Yes. Uh, and, and and but don't you think that should start already in high school, not only in uh, in university or or higher education? I I, I think yes, and every uh, um, not before high school, but in high school, yes, of course, yes. But uh, but then uh, we have another problem: uh, the teachers in high school. They need yes. to be re-educated because otherwise the students that come of high, out of high school now, they, they will be the teachers of the future. And only yes. in, in 20 years of time, we will see the education system change and it's too late. It is a policy priority because um, things will get fast, uh, will, will accelerate. And the innovators and builders of company of tomorrow are the children of today. So... We need, uh, yes, to, 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 to prioritize uh, the uplifting of uh, educators right now. Uh, and it is not a... Fun. I don't see many companies doing that right now. Um, uh, there is a market, uh, by the way, I think. <laughs> <But yes. laughs> uh, I think so, too. <laughs> uh, and and uh, okay, having said that... Uh, um, because then we have education and we talked about uh, chatbots and I think uh, we have chat, chatbots in a lot of forms and, and, and shapes. Um, how do you view, in light of what everything what's happening with large language models and, and, and AI in general, um, and the, the, the chatbot platforms that are around that basically work sort of the old way, um, either very structured, and I think there's a market still, a big market for <laughs> structured chatbots, no AI, where you have a great customer experience uh, and, and it could be transactional, no surprises, everything reproducible. I think there's a market for that. But there's this part in between where you have platforms that um, use uh, intents and utterances and a natural language, uh, an NLP model, um, and and try to figure out what the customer is saying. And those are the, the a lot of the chatbots that you ask a question. And I know in France they use voice more than uh, than text. But uh, you ask a question and it says, I, d I don't understand you. Please try another way. Um, yes. It actually happened last night when I my, I, helped try, uh, I, want, I needed to help my mother something with the bank. And yes. um, it sort of, I asked it a very simple question. And it says, I don't understand you. I'm like, how difficult can this be? Um, and aren't, are we or aren't we moving um, that, that, that there's a part of the chatbot market that, that is going to, disappear or being taken over by uh, AI, LLM models yes. very, very quickly. This is what I see. Yes, I, I agree with you. I think that um, every chatbot will, will be built in the short term on a, a design paradigm, a paradigm uh, that it's called retrieval augmented generation. So it is to connect a large language model to uh, a source of data relevant to its usefulness. Okay, this is one paradigm. The other paradigm is to build what we call uh, autonomous ag agent. Okay, an agent that can do uh, for you uh, uh, a search on internet, uh, buy for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that every piece of software and the website will have some sort of large language model connected to their data. Uh, okay, and 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 right now what I am exploring. Uh, is to do that with a knowledge graph. Okay, why knowledge graph? Because a knowledge graph uh, are structured data, uh, symbolic AI, we, call, we can call it, uh, and you can uh, have within your knowledge graph some sort of temporal, temporal dimension. Uh, you can use a graph algorithm to predict the shortest path uh, between what you want the model to reason about and the document uh, you want to use, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, uh, it is uh, right now. I think the best approach is to get embeddings with your knowledge graph. It is a bit technical, but it is really important that for company to understand that for artificial intelligence to work, you need some data uh, that database behind it 
to feed it with the right uh, data and for it to get uh, uh, the right answer. Yes, because if not, it will hallucinate. It won't be able to personalize, okay? It won't be able to, for example, it won't have access to your client data. It won't be able to recommend stuff. Uh, it won't be able to, 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 to personalize, to, to get uh, answer powerful, relevant to your uh, prospect, etc. Uh, so to build uh, those tools, you, you need that. And what, what are doing big tech? For example, if you take the example of Microsoft, uh, with Copilot, you know, Uh, Copilot are a uh, large language model integrated in Word, uh, PowerPoint, etc. Uh, what we are doing is that uh, the Copilot is a large language model have access of uh, of all your uh, of your Word document of your base of Word document, uh, and because it has access to such data, uh, it can it can uh, uh, recommend to you uh, writing relevant of what you want to say, etc. So, It is a powerful paradigm, um, yes, to develop on. But Copilot won't cover every use case out there. Uh, okay. The, the, And oh, big tech, big tech is writing a lot about this. Okay, a lot of paper are, are releasing right now about personalization. Uh, Microsoft, for example, I have released uh, a paper about uh, using LLM for personalized answers uh, recently, etc. So they are already uh, already working on it. Yes. But uh, if you say that, uh, did you also see the the um, the article coming out that uh, I think it was for Copilot that they said, well, if it has copyright <laughs> infringement or uh, you get a lawsuit, we pay for the legal fees. As Microsoft, because uh, uh, if you have the safeguards on that we put in there, of course, nobody does that because you don't get any good results. Um, so, so the interesting thing is here, if a company tells you that they pay for your legal fees, if you have a copyright infringement or with an image or a problem, um, if you're in the legal department or the, the compliance department of that company, how can you work with that I, 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 I think it's in my opinion it's impossible I'm not against Microsoft by the way but I think that if you're in that stage you take as a large corporation your PR risk or uh, I mean if they pay for the legal fees fines but if you get a, um, a you have to pay punitive damages or something or you get a, a big fine from a government or whatever they're not going to pay that And, and they're going to seek every opportunity to say, okay, yeah, but you didn't put that safeguard on, so uh, we're not going to pay. Um, so I think the risks, the inherent risks are um, that companies don't know they're saying yes to. Um, they're, they're, I'm not saying too big, but they're big and, and, and they're, they're a risk for your uh, continue, the, 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 the business continu continuation. Um, so you need to be aware of this as a company and, and in your decision making, you need to, okay, let's start small. And, uh, if we say yes to big tech here, not develop our own cap capabilities. Um, basically we're fully dependent on this big tech company. Yes. And, um, uh, and, and, and going back to where, how we started. Um, of course, price wise, you're going to be in the, in the dumpster at some point because you're going to pay the maximum price because everybody's going to be enthusiastic and it's everybody's going to use it and all your customers are going to use it. Great. And that's where the problems start. There's this, and there's this other thing um, um, I think about, um, uh, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but uh, it kind of worries me. There's, we know all these companies are saying we are, uh, that are listed at the stock market. We're, we're ESG. We're, we're working according to ESG standards. Uh, so we're, we're green. Amongst, yes. and no child labor, but that's not that. that, that although in, with open AI in Africa, what they're doing with, uh, that, that might be the case. I don't know. I'm not suggesting anything here. Um, but, but in terms of being green, I mean, open AI is everything but green. I mean, they use 700,000 liters of clean water yes, every day. I don't even know how much electricity they use. It's, it's, it's too much. So anything AI, the way it's been used by most companies is not green. So how oh. can a company that's listed at a stock market saying that we're, we are green and we're, you know, we're doing everything? <laughs> They're not if you use AI the way the big tech wants you to use it. 
Uh, my opinion is in the on the green uh, uh, subject. There, there is a subject, okay? Uh, yes, uh, I think that uh, AI has some sustainability issues. I'm not an expert in that, but uh, it is obvious. Uh, yes, we, there might be a, a problem of sustainability. I think that there, there are uh, people working on that, uh, but I'm not an expert uh, per se. But yes, there is a problem of sustainability. I know I don't ignore it. Yes, I think that you need uh, at our level we need to use the AI uh, for useful uh, stuff. Okay, uh, not overuse it, uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, for what you just said, uh, yes, they, they will. What they want, they, they want to lock to lock company in. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, I think one strategy is to to start from your business uh, what you want to do for your customer uh, and from there to choose uh, between all the options that you got that is uh, built on premise uh, use cloud services etc etc and and what comes with uh, cloud services is that uh, it can be much more costlier long term okay um because uh, you pay per usage. So if you don't uh, come, um, uh, have a clear strategy on your usage and if you don't control your usage, it will explode, okay? And on the long term, it will be much more costly than uh, having it in on-premise with your own model, etc. Uh, large language models are very expensive, but right now there are some open source models that are popping up you can use uh, from a hugging face, okay? Yeah, with the commercial uh, license. Uh, with commercial license, okay? Uh, you don't have, uh, you don't need a GPT-4 that is a more powerful model for uh, many use cases. Uh, I know. Okay? And with, with retrieval augmented generation, you can use open source model even with your own data. Uh, there are some good library that is doing that uh, with Yama Index, for example. Uh, and Zephyr, Zephyr 7B is a, a good model with retrieval augmented generation. Yes, I, I say that. So, so I think you need to uh, get your strategy right, okay? Uh, a large company are selling a product that is access to compute uh, and models. Uh, you need to, to ask yourself, do I need it? Uh, why I need it? And uh, yes, and you, there is alternative, uh, Okay. But yes, you need, I think that every company needs some sort of uh, people that is head of uh, artificial intelligence, of data, that know their stuff and can make the right uh, choices. And uh, you, you... artificial intelligence is, exp is expensive. Uh, even cloud is expensive long term because you need some sort of uh, internal uh, workforce resources to make the good choice and development, etc. And if you pay an external sources, Maybe upfront it will be cheap the first month, but every month you will pay per usage. In the long term, you you will it will be expensive. So there are many many uh, many decisions to to make, but it will depend on your business. Start with your problems. Uh, maybe you don't need large language model for every uh, large language model are very niche niche subject uh, a very a niche solution for all your uh, business problem. Uh, there are machine learning that's a prediction of price of uh, of uh, a customer churning etc etc uh, deep, deep vision model uh, deep computer vision model can predict uh, uh, anomalies uh, uh, maintenance issue etc etc so you need to understand all the capabilities of AI and get a strategy, you know? Maybe you just need uh, right now uh, a model that predicts uh, the price of uh, your product next month. That's it, okay? A large language model, are, right now, they are used for customers' uh, relationship. Uh, maybe there, are, there is a huge use case for uh, Asher, so uh, remote resources, there is a, a main use case, but uh, they, they don't cover every uh, business use case. Maybe... Uh, Traditional model, more, more less sophisticated model can cover your needs. You know, so yes. I, I won't go after the fancy models, uh, the fancy uh, trend. Uh, I won't. I will ask myself what I need now. Uh, what is my business problems? 
what model can do and build on that. Yes. But what you're actually saying, if I um, if I'm allowed to do this, um, that anyone who's in charge of AI needs to understand the business and the business problems really, really well in order to match yes. these two together and and get the right solution out there instead of the hip and happening solution. But they need the right solution, big enough, scalable enough, but <coughs> not but not so hip and happening that they're paying. Uh, um, um, extreme prices or extreme prices in the future and then the whole model goes south because it, it's not affordable anymore. It is extremely difficult because I think AI is first and foremost a change management issue. Okay? Behind technology, you change the practice, the way work is done. So it is a change management issue and it is a technological issue. And the biggest techni technological challenge it's from the data, the data engineering part, because behind artificial intelligence, uh, most projects, 85%, maybe 90% of the projects is data engineering issue. You need to get your data right to give the model the right data for it to work. And for large language model, it is the same. Okay, A large language model can't work on your business if your data is a swamp, uh, if you have messy data, if you have no semantic layers, etc., etc. So I think that the, the the biggest investment that you need to do is in the data infrastructure part. Uh, is to understand what you need in terms of data infrastructure. Maybe you don't need the real-time data analytics, uh, okay? Uh, you don't need uh, all the... You need data uh, infrastructure that are relevant to your needs and your business. And uh, yes. But, but um, um, are you implying that a lot of the companies that are out there don't have their data uh, um, well structured and well in order to make it useful for using uh, for with a, a AI slash LLM? Um, or am I seeing this wrong? Is that what many, you're saying? Yes, many companies, I think uh, they got some issue. Yes, uh, I will have a, a call, uh, Doron, just after. Okay. <laughs> yes, many companies have, 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 have issues, yes, uh, in terms of data engineering, yes. uh, large and small. Okay. Um, well, uh, Anthony, thank you very much uh, you, for, for being here on the, on the podcast. And I'm looking forward to... Uh, to seeing what, what kind of projects you're doing because uh, it's going really, really fast and um, I think you're ahead of the game. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so <laughs> yeah, keep me posted. If you get an interesting project you can talk about, let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Daron. Uh, thank you for having me. I wish you the best. Ciao. And thank you. Ciao.